It's a rather odd position for me to be in, to be uh, talking about reclaiming Jewish uh, tradition. Uh, I'm in the category, as many Jews, an assimilated, atheist, uh, um, secular Jew, and there's a kind of a famous version of the irony, you know, Groucho Marx's famous joke, you know, I wouldn't want to join any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> I only feel like asserting my Jewishness as I do when I want to resign. And uh, I've often been asked, in what sense am I Jewish? Well, you know, um, my answer, when I have more time to explain, uh, is, is to give a, a small lecture on Spinoza, one of the philosophers. I teach philosophy. And I, in fact, at the Limud Oz, when they led me in, um, I've spoken twice there to a Jewish audience, which I think is very important for me to do, for us to do. Um, I've explained Spinoza and the kind of Jew he was. Uh, he was kicked out of the uh, Amsterdam Jewish community with the worst uh, charges. I won't have time to read them to you, but these horrible uh, uh, charges against him. Uh, he was uh, given a cherem, which is a kind of an expulsion. And, um, but he himself was a kind of atheist or, or, or non-believer, but, but he became uh, regarded as, as the worst evil. Now, it turns out when I was researching this for that talk, there's a whole tradition of what uh, another famous uh, Jew described as, or used the phrase, non-Jewish Jew. It turns out there's a lot of us. And that's an interesting category. And when I have time to give this uh, in, in an hour or so, I, I, it's interesting to go through on the one hand, what it is to be a Jew, and, and um, Spinoza, the characteristic example. There's a very good book about him by a Jewish philosopher, a woman called Goldstein. And she says it's so typical to be Jewish, to be in that category of being a non-Jewish Jew. It's rather more complicated, but the irony is real. Look, in, in one case when I was asked after Limur of one of these places when someone wanted to disown me, he said, in what sense are you a Jew? Um, in a short conversation, I have one answer. My mother was a survivor of Auschwitz. My father was in the concentration camps elsewhere. And that makes me about as good a Jew, or in, 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 in a sense of a credentials. Um, nobody can deny my Jewishness. I never even think of denying it. And I'm part of what modern Judaism is. It's a range of, of uh, people who identify with their history in a certain way. And it is a historical contingent fact. It's, it's not because of my religious beliefs. Um, it's not even, in, in some important sense, an ethnic matter, because I don't believe that uh, we're, you know, in any genetic sense connected. So it's a complicated question, but there's no real issue about that. So that's relevant to mention. And because I uh, broke away in, in terms of my life, I mean, I've committed the ultimate crime in the view of many Jews. I married a shiksa, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's a non-Jewish woman. Um, you know, some of the rabbis have the gall to say, I was completing the work of Hitler. That tells you some of the <coughs> attitudes Vivian alluded to, of what it is to be uh, uh, not sufficiently uh, committed to the community and so on. Let me, in my random uh, discussion, while I've got a few minutes, remind you of, of, of an important version of this uh, commitment and requirement to, be, to show allegiance. Um, one of the heroes uh, of, of the tradition that I represent uh, was Hannah Arendt, another non-Jewish Jew. And uh, I have slides and discussions about her to illustrate the sort of point that I want to make. She was a very important figure for many reasons, a philosopher. She um, studied under Heidegger, who was a card-carrying Nazi for his whole life, even after the war, which is an interesting story. But um, she fled from Europe. But the point I wanted to make was that she covered the Eichmann trial as a journalist for the New Yorker, I think. and. Um, wrote the famous book, Eichmann in Jerusalem, and the subtitle is very well known, The Banality of Evil. She was very much criticized um, for, for, for the book and her attitudes. And she was very angry with the prosecutor, I've forgotten his name for the moment, um, because the prosecutor ran the trial against Eichmann on the grounds of the crime against the Jewish people. And she said, no, it's a crime against humanity that was perpetrated on the Jewish people. That distinction is extremely important today. It's extremely important because the crime, uh, uh, the, the, the idea that you have to first uh, have an allegiance to humanity, and as a Jew, your first allegiance is not to the Jewish people, which I've often been criticized for. People say to me, you must first and foremost be a Jew. No, I think you must first and foremost be a human being. It's embarrassing to have to say that. These are truisms that I never thought I'd have to actually assert, where I would have thought everybody grew up thinking that. They don't. So part of the problem we're confronting is this 
attitude inside the Jewish community. Um, I was going to say uh, one of the things about this dis tradition of dissent. I think Jews invented dissent. The talk I gave at, um, at the Limud was actually titled uh, The Wicked Son. Those of you who are Jewish will know what that reference is to. If you're not Jewish, I should tell you quickly, it's a reference to the uh, Passover service, the, the liturgy every Passover, where uh, the, part of the reading of, of the Haggadah, it's called, I sound like I know what it is to be Jewish, and I can throw away this word. The Haggadah is the little book that you read, which is the story of the Exodus. And in there, there's a warning. Uh, the, the, the family always reads out the four sons. And I can't remember all of the four sons. sons. Huh? Sons, of course. So, of course, we <laughs> about the girls. Mind you, in this autobiographical piece I wrote, when I was a kid, one of the first signs that I don't belong to this tribe, my family had a, a Seder, a uh, Passover service every year at my uncle's place, but I could never read the part that the young boy has to read, the Manishtan, my cousin, the girl, had to read it, and that's the first sign that I really don't belong in this, uh, this uh, business. Come on in. You're missing the most important parts of my speech. There's Come on, a please. Of chairs. Yeah, chairs over here. Thank you. Do I get extra time for this distraction? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm talking about the Haggadah and the, okay. the, four, the, the, the four sons. I was about to say that part of the, the um, important uh, passage there that I wanted to mention was actually the title of a talk I gave at the Limud. I called it The Wicked Son because of the four sons. It only occurred to me recently in later life. I went to a friend's uh, Seder for many years after my family stopped doing it long ago. Um, and I suddenly realized the significance of one of the sons. The wicked son is described as the one who separates himself from the community. In other words, the worst crime that you can commit is not to identify yourself with the community. Now, the terms that are used, I've got something to say, but just want to hurry up and not say too much. Uh, uh, Vivian mentioned the uh, phrase, which I wanted to say just one or two words about, the self-hating Jew phrase. Um, I have a lot to say about that. I think this is an important and absurd kind of accusation that's made against people like us. But I, I, I mentioned before that I think Jews invented the idea of dissent. Let me tell you a little bit of a historical, biblical allusion, which is very significant. In my slides when I give this talk, I refer to the phrase, Ocher um, Yisrael. Uh, I don't speak Hebrew, but the phrase Ocher Yisrael comes in the Bible, and I'll just read this slide. Uh, today, of course, uh, commentators denounce um, uh, the new historians, for example, Ilan Papa, and various people that are the descending Jews using that term. And it's interesting because it's a phrase in the Bible, as I understand it means Israel hating, and it was uh, uh, to do with um, the, the, the passages in the Bible where King Ahab called the prophet Elijah, Ocher Israel, um, and it's the only time I understand it's used in the, the Bible. But of course now, Elijah is, is for us uh, a prophet, a hero. And the significance of that story is that that uh, um, uh, it's not King Ahab that's the hero. I mean, he's the bad guy, as we now see it. But what the, the guy we regard today as the, 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 the hero of the story, the prophet, was regarded as a hater of the Jews and a hater of Israel. That's, when that phrase is used, so I'm turning this around, as some others have done, the phrase self-hating Jew is inadvertently a kind of a compliment. It's the tradition of dissent. And dissent is a noble tradition, and when I give this talk, I cite not only Spinoza, but Socrates and Galileo, and any number of others. When I gave the talk at the Wood, I went through some of this to show that dissent is an important and, and uh, intellectually and morally important stance that we should take. So the idea that the Jews who, who dare to criticize are treated with this kind of contempt and, and dismissed as the, the wicked son is dismissed as somehow not belonging, this is a very uh, significant um, indicator of, of the, the tribalism, uh, the, the idea that, that, that there's this, this passionate and emotional connection and anybody who's got the, to use the current term, you have to be a team player, a team, whatever it is, Team Australia, whatever. Let me mention a couple of other cases that I wanted to mention because the best way to talk about what this position involves is to talk about the examples that I like to cite. I have a whole page in one of my slides of the dissidents, the self-hating Jews, which include uh, people like um, the historians, of course, Ilan Pape and others, Amira Haas, who's coming here, Gidon Levy, who's a, a journalist, and he has to have a, f a, a full-time bodyguard uh, paid for by the Haaretz newspaper. He's a journalist, for God's sake. I mean, he writes stuff which I, mean, I happen to agree with, um, and to the credit of Israel, it's in the newspaper there, if anybody reads it. But it's in Haaretz. It's in Haaretz, okay. But what I'm getting at is that the, the fact that someone like that has to have a, a full-time bodyguard in Israel because he says things that... Uh, 
are critical of Israel. 